my question right now, I guess, so that I don't take up too much of your guys' time, uh, is simply this. Uh, with all the policing and stuff that's going on um, and all of my interactions with the police, uh, I've, I have a question about fines and fees. We're talking about income of the cops and where their money and revenue comes from. And uh, I guess my question, I thought about a lot of it, but uh, the one that I haven't heard anybody talk about is fines and fees, uh, seating tickets and parking tickets and and how that is such a, I've been very passionate about feeling like that is a, a tax on poor, yeah. a tax on poor people just because of, uh, the, it's a percentage thing. A, a rich person can go get five speeding tickets and it costs them less than 0.5% of their income. But, you know, yeah. if I'm late for a job and I get a speeding ticket and I make, you know, I'm one of those people that, you know, uh, works less than uh, $15 an hour. And I just, I guess I, 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 are you guys, is this something we can add on to this conversation? Is, well, it, is it too early? No, I think, look, I mean, yes, it's highly regressive, but I think also this, um, this dynamic got a lot of attention in the wake of St. Louis and, uh, and that, um, and I think when we, in fact, when we interviewed, uh, was it, uh, Carl Johnson, um, Ed Johnson, uh, uh, recently about uh, uh, he was writing about St. Louis. Walter Johnson. Walter Johnson. Sorry. Um, he, uh, I, I think we brought that up. It was certainly in his book about the particularly uh, in Ferguson. Um, yeah. There, th that was um, a huge source of it doesn't go directly to the cops, but they bring it in. And that's the you know, part of but the it calculus. goes to the whole wealthy um, part of the town. Well, I mean, it goes into the general fund the and it's general a redistribution. Fund. Yeah. And basically what it is, it's yeah. a way of like, we don't have to tax uh, uh, right. everybody, rich people, uh, right. because we're basically levying this tax on poor people. Um, and yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I think, I, 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 I think you, 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 you eliminate that dynamic if, or at least you mitigate that dynamic I think if you say like, look, we're going to have a limited, limited portfolio of things that we expect the police to do. And therefore, we're going to take away a percentage of their budget. Is it going to be 30 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent, whatever that is. Uh, and over time, I think that 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 number actually grows because you begin to realize like you start to have confidence that like, hey, we don't need police when it comes to dealing with um, with folks who are unhoused. We don't need police when it comes to dealing with people who are uh, dealing with uh, mental issues. Um, we don't need police to be pulling over as many, um, you know, traffic violations. We just don't need it. We can actually maybe, I mean, maybe you just have, you know, um, if you- Yeah, all I, I grew up in, um, I, I grew up in uh, central Minnesota about two hours west of the the twin cities metro and i um I, I i we always knew about speed traps and it was something i grew up with where it was like there's a certain towns that you do not speed even one mile and over and over the speed limit but they will pull you over and and give you a speeding ticket basically to supplement the the budgets of those small sure. towns which are relying on that income and i always just knew that that was that just seemed off you know even as a, well years ago before my I think there's there's two there's two different issues right with that like one obviously you shouldn't be using it as a uh, a mechanism in which to fund your your city or your town but the other is is that like you know this can be a little bit more touchless if you're really concerned about people running red lights or you're concerned about people speeding you can set up a speed trap cops it in his car shoots the radar gun and then just mails you know you, you see the license plate. I mean, they do this yeah. with, uh, you know, you send the ticket that way. It's not like, it's not like, you know, you're going up to the car and the percentage of times that the cop has, like, what, why does the cop need discretion in that situation for every time that he does give a ticket or doesn't give a ticket, you know, it balances out in the end. It's better not to have those interactions because how many of them go South? I don't know, but enough that it's not worth it. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's you mail the ticket. Also, people should really look at it. it wasn't it wasn't that long a period of time, but it's enough to gather a little bit of anecdotal evidence from uh, the cops did a strike in New York several years ago because uh, they were angry at de Blasio. And but what the strike amounted to was they stopped policing nonsense. They stopped, you know, harassing people for 
you know, drinking a beer on their porch. They stop busting people for hopping a turnstile. And the argument, again, even though they don't use broken windows terminology anymore, the argument of terrorizing people and in specific zip codes for like petty nonsense is that this is going to bleed into other things that if you allow the small thing to happen, the big thing happens. It didn't happen. I mean, honestly, these cops during that walkout were striking themselves out of a lot of their jobs, frankly. It was a Wally Pip situation. Yeah. They were just showing like you don't need to do it. And I, and there is, and and when it comes to those fines, I mean, this is another reason though, that it's really important. I think, you know, got to make sure that, that it isn't just cuts it, that the money stays there and is redistributed to other departments. It isn't just new austerity. Uh, And I would also, by the way, tack on, I think much more tougher regulations on private security firms and things like that, because that's going to be another thing we'll see. Appreciate the call, Carl. Uh can I take one question, a little add-on? Uh, do you think that a, uh, I think in Europe they do like a, a, a I'll, I'll, I'll take the question off, but uh, like a, a token-based fining system. So as far as like um, strikes against your license, I don't know much about that system. Is that something that we could, tra- or a similar system transition to away from fees? Thank you guys so Appreciate much. Appreciate you, Carl. Thanks. I don't know. I, I, you know, that. I don't know that system either. I mean, I'm sure there's, there's something that we can do that's more equitable. Um, I don't know if it's a question of like a sliding scale uh, based upon your income. I mean, that's certainly, I mean, I just remember like a piece where I think it was about Letterman and how when he was driving into New York to do a show all the time, you get like these speeding tickets at 150 miles an hour or something like that. And he's just like, yeah, whatever. You know, <laughs> my insurance is going to go up. Who cares? I make uh, $10 million a year or whatever it is. Like, I don't care. Uh, um, and it seemed quite obvious. 